let's just hope that the ice that my phone is on on a selfie stick does they crack because if it does I've lost my phone but there was no other way that I could get to these rocks and we need to look at them and we need to talk about them because these these are our meta sedimentary rocks that make up the Grand Fen Highlands of Scotland the Grand Fen Highlands is known as a terrain in Scotland which is separated by the the Highland Boundary Fault Line to the south which runs from Stonehaven all the way through to Helensburgh and then across to Arran and then to the north by the Great Glen Fault. Now the Great Glen Fault is recognisable on a map of Scotland, just a normal map. It's what Loch Ness sits in and it's like a straight line that cuts right through Scotland. So these rocks that make up the Grand Fen Highlands sit in between there. And there's various different types and various different meta sediments within these rocks and it shows it tells you a story of what was happening in that mountain belt that formed 450 million years ago 440 million years ago in scotland now back when these rocks were originally deposited they were deposited within a marine environment an oceanic environment right it was sediments that came together as sand silts and muds that were deposited in the Iaptus Ocean off the coast of Laurentia back in the day. Now Laurentia is where Scotland was situated and Avalonia was another continent where England was situated. So England and Scotland were once upon a time separate, believe it or not. And then they came together in this, in this beautiful Caledonian orogeny. Now the Caledonian orogeny happened 450 million years ago, right? It's when you had the closure of the Aptus Ocean and you had the two plates collide with each other. So as you have the two plates collide with each other, the ocean, the like oceanic crust, usually subducts under the continental crust because it's a lot denser. It's made up of mafic minerals, usually with sediment on top of it. Because it's a lot denser, it's, it's ended up subducting under this continental crust because that's silica rich. That's made up of these lighter minerals, right? So as it subducts under, it causes all this mountain building to happen on the other continent, right? And at one point you had mountains that were higher than the Himalayas. So when you look at India colliding with Asia, that's what happened in Scotland 450 million years ago, right? So all of the rocks that formed sandstones, siltstones and mudstones that were sedimentary before were then within this mountain belt. And what happens? When you have a mountain belt, it's, it's, these rocks are buried deep within, within this mountain chain. They then undergo metamorphism, which is known as regional metamorphism. Now, regional metamorphism just means that the rocks have changed. That's what metamorphism is. A metamorphic rock is usually either been a sedimentary rock or an igneous rock or even a metamorphic rock again. It's just been polymetamorphosed several times. It's changed over geological time due to the intensity of pressure and temperature. So because they're buried within the within the crust, within this mountain belt, they undergo change. So a mudstone, for instance, turns into a slate when it hits 300 degrees Celsius and you get minerals such as chlorite and biotite forming in it. As it's buried deeper within the ground, it then turns into a schist or a phyllite first and then a schist. And then eventually it turns into a nice. So when it reaches the schist point, it's foliated. It's got minerals in it, such as garnets, selimanite, kyanite. These minerals are index minerals and they can tell you a story. If you find the mineral within the rock, it'll tell you what temperature that this rock formed at, which is absolutely fascinating. Of course, this happens over millions and millions of years. It's pretty cool and interesting, but we found some today and I swear to God, this better not like crack. This is garnet mica schist. You can see the garnets in it. That's where the rock is behind me. It's part of the Kelly Frankie schist formation, part of the Dalradian supergroup. Now, obviously, over geological time, these processes keep going and lots of things can be happening at this point, right? So these rocks have actually undergone a few different deformation events. They've been polymetamorphosed in areas across the highlands. It's not just the same rock, like, it just varies like they're all meta sedimentary rocks right but it can be samite peelite semi peelite quartzite like honestly like with all these different index minerals in it it gets really complicated when it comes to geology but hopefully in the next um year or so 
I'll be putting together a few videos that explain this in more detail and in a more understandable way, right? Because I feel like geology is people forget about geology and they just look at it and think it's just a rock, but it's not just a rock hen. That rock is that rock is old as fuck and it means something. People just forget this. And it's so annoying. But I I feel like the ice is melting under my feet, so I think that's all I have to say about it. And of course these rocks after they were buried deep within that mountain chain, they came to the surface. They were brought to the surface by uplift and other tectonic events. They've been eroded away as well over geological time to expose what's here today at the surface. Pretty cool and interesting man. Pretty cool and interesting. So we'll leave it at that and I'll try and get my phone back before the ice cracks. I forgot how deep the water is under here. Oh my god. <laughs> Bucks. That that will eventually turn into a sandstone, right there. Someone's just done another bungee jump. I don't know where they are. Wee! Back to the car I go. Oh man, dodgy as fuck. <gasps> Whoops. Oh well. <laughs> right. How did I get down here? Where's the path? Oh, there it is.